This video is brought to you by coupler.io. More about this later in the video. Hello there, welcome back to the new video. Today I'll be talking about this very interesting paper which is titled as Tab LLM, Few Short Classification of Tabular Data with Large Language Models. So this is from researchers from MIT CSAIL and University of Munster. And this is a pretty recent one and came out in the October 2022. So before I move forward, let me talk to you about this very amazing tool called Coupler. Coupler.io is an integration tool that helps you build data ingestion pipeline with ease. It automatically syncs information from sources at regular intervals, offering you more than 85 data sources, including Google Sheets, Google Ads, BigQuery, and even Slack. And it takes as less than five minutes for setting up your own pipeline. So let me show you a video that walks you through how do you create that and also some other USBs. So here you go. Export data from your favorite apps without a single click. Do it automatically with Coupler IO. Just select the apps for transferring data, specify your preferences, and set a schedule for automatic updates. Coupler IO will keep refreshing your data without any manual effort from your side. Get rid of endless copy pasting and tons of exported files. Thousands of professionals already use Coupler IO for collecting data, custom reporting, creating data backups, and analyzing metrics. And all this with greater efficiency and without human errors. Automate repetitive tasks and start saving time right now. Try Coupler IO for free. So that was Coupler for you. I've personally used it in a couple of my projects, so do give it a try. It's free to sign up. Make sure to check out first link in the description. Now let's head back to the paper. So let's start with the abstract. So they say that we study the application of large language models to zero shot and few shot classification on tabular data. We prompt the large language models in a serialization of the tabular data to a natural language string together with the short description of the classification problem. Okay. So as we have seen typically when we are dealing with tabular data and let's say we are trying to do a classification problem over there, tree-based algorithms usually perform much better. But what this paper essentially talks is, can we use existing large language models and see if we can do really good classification and particularly in the setting when we have no data, when we have zero data for the new class, which is the zero short setting, or maybe some bit of a data for each class and then we are trying to learn the generalized version of the classification model over there. So is that possible with large language models is the question that this paper tries to answer. So that's what they have written, right? They start to serialize the tabular data with the natural language string because that is for sure something that you will do because you're using language models that are trained entirely on the text strings and don't really understand what a column or table data would mean like. So you'll have to serialize them, convert them into a natural language query and then eventually pass it on to these models. So yeah, on top of it, they also use short description of the classification problem that essentially acts as a prompt for these language models to try and get the answer during its prediction. So as we move ahead in the paper, we'll see to all these examples. So they try out various serialization methods starting from template based to table to text and some other language models. And it's really interesting to see that they found this method to be outperforming prior deep learning based tabular classification methods on several benchmark data sets. So that's really good actually. And also it's really competitive when it comes to comparing it with traditional methods like gradient boosting trees, especially when we are talking about few short setting, which means the data is really less for these models to essentially learn everything in a supervised way. Cool. So this looks like a really interesting paper. So let's move forward and delve more into this. So this is the overview of the entire tab LLM method. We start off with tabular data that has K labeled rows. And let's say we are doing a binary classification problem saying if the income is less than 50K or greater than 50K. So this is a target variable and these are all uh, predictors or features. And the row written in blue is what we want to predict class for, which is that given an age of 42, education being master, gain being 594, whether the income would be greater than or less than or equal to 50k. So as we discussed, since we are using a language model, so the entire table has to be serialized into text format, followed by a prompt that represents the concern record for making the prediction. So let's say if we talk about doing the manual templating, then the serialization can look something like the age is 42, 
the education is master the gain is 594 so the template something kind of looks like the dash is v so this is an entity or let's say a feature so here the first one is age so the age is 42 because that's what you see over here then the f is v and f and v is what we want to fill so f is education over here so the education is the value is master so you fill master over here and similarly you can do it for gain so this is one way of creating manual templates the other is table to text you can use bloom table to text model that is a little natural way of converting these into readable format rather than something that looks pretty repetitive and formatted so this one could say like the person is 42 years old she has a master the gain is 594 dollars and if you want to go more creative and have more diversity in the entire serialization process you can even use language models over here but once all of this is done since we want to make a prediction for this white column which is income over here we had a prompt relevant to this so we say does this person earn more than fifty thousand dollars yes or no then follow their keyword answer now whatever the model predicts is likely to be either y or n so that's the beauty right because all these language models have been trained on vast variety of textual data so the similar looking templates might have occurred multiple times helping model to sense the kind of output it has to predict once you also give an options of confining the space of generating the answers so yeah this is the inference flow actually what you see over here because whatever you have over here which is in blue colored stuff is table description and this yellow colored statement is the prompt using both of which model tries to give the answer now if you talk about the fine tuning phase which is mentioned in this dotted structure so we started by creating these templates for each of the rows that we have in a data set for which we have the target variable already there and similarly the prompt around the target column so this is then fed to large language model where the idea is like if you give both of these samples the next prediction that the model has to make if it's yes or no and how it matches the ground truth the back propagation takes place and the model's weight get updated and now as the model is trained the way you do the inference for this 40 second column is that you devise the story or the serialization of the features and also define a prompt for the target variable and now since we have trained a model in saying yes and no predictions so again the model here can ideally be expected to say either yes and no from that learn set so yeah this is the entire concept of few short classification on tabular data using large language models so let's see formal version of it so the problem formalization can be put it as let's say we have n rows and d columns or features then the entire data set is composed of x i's and y i's that go to n where x is nothing but a d-dimensional feature and y is the class from set of classes that we have in case you are doing a classification problem and in case you are solving a regression task using this technique you can go about quantizing the target column into certain manageable number of classes and do the prediction as a proxy to doing regression so yeah the serialization of table data is done where f is nothing but all the feature column names that you have and x is the values associated to them and the serialized function is now nothing but what they experimented which was either it could be list based text based table to text gpt3 t0 and all of this is what they have experimented and finally once the serialization is done you also append the prompt which is p and then pass it to the language model for either doing the inference or doing the fine tuning phase so if you see some of the results this figure shows the effect of different serialization methods on public data set so clearly we can see right the blue and orange color lines is what are on the skyline which is based out of list and text template so list as in you have a feature f1 and the value let's say v1 then feature f2 value v2 and let's say one more which is feature v3 and value v3 you concatenate all of this and this becomes your serialization so that is list template and text anyways we have seen which is the value of f1 is v1 the value of f2 is v2 like this if you concatenate all these strings so if you talk about the lower numbers if we don't have a lot of data let's say two to four data points then text template performs relatively good whereas when you keep increasing the number of shots or number of training data points that you have more or less the list and text perform equally good with the worst being a red line which is based on t0 and that is mostly i believe because of the fact that if you are trying to use a language model it starts adding a lot of language level features 
that might eventually confuse the model sticking to its goal of actually predicting the class because then the model might also get tempted to also understand the way language is written on the input end because t0 would essentially produce more fluent language rather than just focusing on the content that's there in the table so yeah, that could be one of the things that's why keeping the serialization as simple as possible which is just concatenating features and values or even putting it as a language that is really simple and repetitive helps the model to focus more on the actual problem rather than language okay and this table is essentially the performance of tab llm versus all the baseline on public data set so clearly we can see when you have less number of samples to be trained tab llm is already performing at a 72 percent of auc which in case if you're trying to use any supervised model let's say light gbm that is almost random predictions till you reach to a certain number of samples where model actually starts learning which is 64 over here and that's why you see a steep curve over here when light gbm starts performing and as you go down this lane the supervised models are ideally expected to perform much better than the tab LLM method but the good thing right away that i can see of this method is that able to compete with these supervised models head to head and also the advantage that it brings to the table is when you are having very less data which is less than four samples this method will still work but none of the supervised would work because there is no information as such to learn from as of now so yeah that's pretty good actually so now we have the results cool so i think we are done with the paper now so this was a pretty interesting read to see the involvement of language models coming to the paper when talking about doing table classification or understanding tabular data so if you like such content make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel also share it across the friends to whosoever is interested in such content also make sure to check out kapra.io it's going to really help you solve all your data needs and the best part you don't need any credit card information to access the trial pack of it and enjoy its benefits cool then i'll meet you in the next one see ya bye bye